Greetings, dear friends. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Again, we join from around the world, meeting in our circle, around our group, Heart Chalice. To research, reflect, and invoke the souls of our nations through our creative lab work that we continue for the third season. The 2025 initiative together with the Hikal group from Jerusalem and Klangshali group from Germany welcomes you all. Thank you for joining. Over to you, Uta. Thank you. Hello. Welcome. This is the 29th lab session already. We come together as wise women and men in training from many nations. And we are in training for overseeing the affairs of the family of nations trying out together how a United Nations of the future may look and feel. Now we are in Capricorn. We stand on the mountain top on our pinnacle as the observer and the steward. And what we see from this panorama view is, first of all, this great force towards central control by the materialistic forces active in our world, and how well they are organized and networked for their own selfish purposes, and how we, as elders in training, as part of the forces of light, with our motive of uh, the well-being for all, how we still need um, to learn more, holding a unified purpose, becoming efficient, an efficient force in the world with a planetary vision. We know that much depends on the united action of the world group. So now when we go into meditation, when we meet in our subjective council of elders chamber, let us be aware of the potential and the hope that this kind of togetherness on behalf of our world holds. Let's be aware that we are a factual presence. We are a conscious alternative to the materialistic forces which still rule our planet. We are part of the externalization of the hierarchy. So let us unite our hearts, our minds and our wills in the focused silence of our chamber of the Council of Elders. Let us withdraw our attention inwards now to a place of perfect stillness. Breathing deeply. Grounding in our body and in the earth. In the embrace of the mother of the world.
we are calmly present as souls in incarnation. For a moment, let us touch base with our own nation, standing on our pinnacle as the conscious self of our nation, midway between its personality and its soul. Feeling the love of our nation. And also our freedom from it. And holding the note of our nation while also holding our personal sense of self getting these two into balance. And raising now our vibration to get ready for the gathering of elders. We become elders for our planet, for humanity. Letting ourselves be drawn to a beautiful building set in nature. And entering in, coming into a quiet, and clear and spacious chamber. People from different parts of the world file in and find their seat, perhaps in a circle or a half circle. And we take our seat among them. Becoming aware of the rich background that each brings into this space, the unique note of each nationality. We notice that in all the outer diversity, it's the same wisdom which shines through all of our eyes. Our faces radiate benevolence and integrity and freedom. Let's embody this. And we can feel how each of us love our nation and also we are capable to address fearlessly and honestly its shortcomings.
And let a focused silence now settle upon the chamber. Uniting our hearts, our minds, our intuition, and our will. We sense the presence of high beings supporting and guiding this work. And holding together this space this breadth of vision and consecration of heart, this safe space for the affairs of the family of nations. And let us now continue maintaining this fine-tuned field, holding it as we are getting ready for our work session. So we are convening today for the nation of Israel And before we focus on it, I would like to reiterate a few points. We have talked about this before, but it is good to bring it back into our consciousness each time. Let us recall the significance of our work as a group unit for our nation. being aware that we act as a magnet, a focalizing point within the consciousness of the nation. Through our work, we set up a magnetic field by bringing into relation the personality and the soul of our nation. So in this way, a field is created in which transmutation and transformation and reorientation can occur. And we do this, we become this, by bringing together the heart, the mind, the intuition and the will of the group. Think about it for a moment. We draw the heart, the mind, the intuition and the will into one synthetic action. When we think it through, it's a logical and sequential process. So let's go through it again, one phase after another. We start with the heart. And that means we firmly maintain our common ground in the heart as a group. 
in the love and respect for each other, no matter what. Group unity, the group heart. So this is our baseline from which we never move. And if we are thrown off it, then we first of all re-establish it. So on this stable and safe basis, we then start to use the mind. We each think through the national situation towards what DK calls a completed point of view. This mental effort at our present level of development, of course, our personal point of view will not be complete. Let's humbly accept that. But the act of thinking through and formulating a standpoint is our contribution to the clearing of the mental plane. And then comes the very difficult but possible step where we share our viewpoints where we listen to each group member's standpoint and bearing the differences and holding together this field of tension in sincerity and respect for each other, even if the other's viewpoint may be outrageous. Breathing through it. And when we succeed with this, when we can hold our diverse viewpoints in the group field, in the group awareness, without judging each other, then the light of the intuition of the soul can shine on them in shared meditation. Then the magic of a higher point of synthesis of emerging may appear and a wider, more comprehensive picture may be grasped by the group. And out of this work, we may eventually be able to shape a vision for our nation. It may take many attempts. It's not a one, one session process. will emerge. And then by putting our intent, our will, our fire behind this vision, then we become causal. Then we ignite something new. We initiate a next step in our nation. So this is the ideal sequence. And we believe that it's doable if our intent is strong and long enough. So, with this in mind, this ideal, let's now get ready for our work with Israel. As elders, we will hold space for this nation now, listening to the snapshot of Israel, which will be delivered by Helen on behalf of the Hechal group from Jerusalem. And at the end of the snapshot, we will have the opportunity to issue a blessing, each one of us, for this nation. Okay, so let us take a deep breath. Centering ourselves again in our own inner stillness.
joining as elders in training in our hearts and our minds, our intuition and our will. Let again a relaxed and yet focused silence settle in our chamber. And inviting now into our awareness, the nation of Israel as a living entity. Take a moment to sense its presence, its note. Okay, now we are ready to receive the Israeli snapshot. Helen, please. Thank you, Uta. <clears throat> good, good evening <clears throat> and good day, friends. Uh, the state of Israel is an enterprise of the Jewish people. In its declaration of independence in 1948, Israel calls itself a Jewish democratic state. It is an attempt to bring together <clears throat> a very ancient Oriental history and a young, very modern Western statehood. The new entity is in process of becoming through the friction between these two. This young entity is not yet defined, even in its physical shape. <coughs> Excuse me. The fact that this experiment is happening on the ancient Jewish homeland, which is the homeland also of the native people, keeps the region in constant turmoil. As long as this situation is not sorted out along the lines of right human relations, the very survival of the young state remains in balance. So, Israel is a young country with a very old history. Due to its youngness and the fast pace of its development, Israel gives us the opportunity to be eyewitnesses of the process of creation of a collective entity. Let us attempt to trace the creative process from its inception to today, from the mental impulse down to the emotional expression, down to the outer appearance. <clears throat> the 
the general widespread anti-Semitism culminating in the Holocaust was the main incentive for founding a Jewish state on the ancient Jewish homelands. The creation of a safe place for the Jewish people based on Jewish history and values. At the same time, the founders brought with them the best of modern secular culture. Some of the best of communism was adopted, for example, in the form of the kibbutzim, which are communal villages, and in the form of a very developed social welfare system. More in the background, there are the Muslim, the Christian, Druze influences present in the Israeli field. This wide range, range of beliefs and the failure to bridge among them is a major source of their growing distorted expressions. Through the founding of the new state, Judaism has received new life for better and for worse. We see, for example, a revival of the Hebrew language and many forms of culture imported by the immigrants and adapted into the new society. But we also see Orthodox Jewry imposing Jewish laws that clash with the thriving pluralistic and liberal human values. Their prevalent influence distorted what started as the impulse of a traumatized people to build a safe space distorted it into arrogant possessiveness and undue entitlement. This sense of entitlement is perhaps the major stumbling block in the psyche of the young state. Magia Li is the Hebrew term for I deserve. Magia Li harks back to the ancient past, as recorded in the Bible, in which the Jewish people are, are portrayed as the chosen people, chosen by God to bring light to the Gentiles. The whole area of Palestine was given to them by God, the promised land. This Jewish story has deep esoteric roots, which we cannot trace here, but which has led to the persecution of the Jews throughout millennia. A racial trauma developed with a deep sense of victimhood. <clears throat> so we have a very complex psychological situation of victimhood mixed with superiority. Magia Li, I deserve, both because I am victim and because I am something special. The religious identification hangs like a heavy stone on the young country. Parallel to this complex ancient heritage, there is a thriving secular culture. The freshness of a young and dynamic and innovative people 
which built up a blossoming country and an impressive economy in just a few decades. Since there is no separation between state and religion, the constant rub between the old traditional ways and the new secular Western lifestyle makes high intensity and tension the day-to-day -day norm. This intensity expresses itself with much noise and busyness in a constant burst of creativity and ingenuity. But it also causes chronic nervousness and aggravation, which is acerbated by the permanent underlying threat from neighboring countries. We could say that the emotional body of Israel is in a constant state of inflammation. And on the physical plane, well, Israel is much more, much is a much smaller country than its noise would suggest. It is surrounded by Arab states. Its neighbors are Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Egypt, and the disputed West Bank territories. Its borders were originally defined by the British who divided the Middle East into different nations as part of the new order after the World War. However, as the result of a continuous dispute, Israel has conquered Palestinian territories, which are since 1967 under its occupation. So its physical borders remain and stay undefined. The country has a rich diversity of nature. If you go to the northern part, the Galilee, there are soft hills, green and lush around the Sea of Galilee. If you go to the south, there is the desert with its grounding energy of Mother Earth. And everywhere, the country is densely populated. When we look at the Israeli personality as a whole, we see mainly intense dynamics and turmoil. This personality is far from being coherent and integrated. The tension between several strong mental thought forms causes the chronic tension on the emotional level. As long as the physical borders of uh, this national entity are not defined, the entity itself remains undefined. It clearly is, and still is, an entity in process of becoming. Um, if we take the Declaration of Independence on May 15, 1948, as its birthday, we have a Taurus personality there. So the two most obvious problems of Israel are the conflict between the religious and the secular segments of its society and the occupation of the Palestinian territories. The 
the first Jewish settlers came to Palestine with the dream of building a safe place for the healing and renewal of a broken people. In their trauma, they seemed to overlook the existence of the local native inhabitants. This attitude of theirs of ent entitlement and claim over the land led to carelessness and injustice towards the natives. Those settlers were unaware that this attitude laid the foundation for an endless spiral of enmity and armed conflict, a vicious circle of threat and survival, of ever more fortification and separativeness. And this opens the door to evil forces, to evil influences. Religious righteousness can be easily stirred into hatred and violence. There are endless examples of how religious zeal is being instrumentalized by different individuals or groups from the inside and from the outside. The Jewish settlements in Palestine, in the Palestinian occupied territories, are like festering demonic entry points for violence and corruption. And they are encouraged and supported by greedy politicians. An example, maybe a little bit extreme, is one of those extreme uh, factions of uh, those young Jewish settlers that uh, use violence on the Arab population to prevent them from reaping their crops. And the state security uh, doesn't do much about it. The Arab citizens comprise 20% of the Israeli population. Being second-rate citizens adds to their conflicts of loyalty between their Israeli citizenship and their Palestinian brethren in the occupied territories. It's quite a stretch. Another dangerous uh, symptom of entitlement is the sense that one is above the law. For example, we see Orthodox religious Jews ignoring the law of the state since they feel obliged only to the law of God. Um, it's part of the religious Orthodox Jews. Also the Arabs have their own laws, denying the law of the state. Also international law, seems not of great importance in Israel. Israel participates in the United Nations, but there is no trust in it and no real moral obligation is felt to follow the UN's resolutions. There are many, many more difficulties which we cannot hold in one snapshot. Like, for example, the high militarization and weapon business, like uh, the corrupt media, like the misuse of anti Semitism by both Jews and Gentiles.
and Israel as a state depends for its very existence on the heavy support from the diaspora jewelry and the safeguarding umbrella of the USA. These dependencies open Israel wide for manipulation by outside forces who do not have the interest of the citizens at heart. It is in fact a group of uh, powerful families which rule the country economically. And which positive character traits may counteract evil influences and eventually eradicate these entry points? Well, Israel seems to possess a never ending pool of creativity and ingenuity. The Jewish brilliant mind made Israel into a startup nation and it possesses enough resources to pursue the most ambition plans. It's the moral maturity on which will depend the use of these resources. The morality of the prophets of Judaism are a resource which may be tapped and applied to daily life. Like uh, we mentioned Asagioli, Roberto Asagioli, who wrote a deep article on the prophet, the prophet Isaiah, which he called, What Would Isaiah Say Today? And he transported those teachings into modern life. It's a very powerful uh, writing. And there are also the secular, liberal, pluralistic, humanistic thinkers and activists which work for equality, unity, and transparency. Social welfare projects are also being further developed. Many new initiatives, fresh and still very young and small. Rebellion, not accepting things as they are, is part of the strength of Israel. A big and yet unused potential lies in the Arab creativity. Arabs are slowly finding their voice as individual and in small groups. In the political arena, they are still struggling. During the previous short government, they were for the first time treated as equal legitimate partners. Like in many other nations, there is a growing number of Israelis taking to the streets in support of democracy and equality, standing up to corruption and attacks against uh, like the Supreme Court now. As to Israel's capacity for self-reflection, opinions are readily and noisily exchanged, but seldom with the wisdom of a comprehensive long-term vision. There is a small minority who use their critical independent thinking and make their voices heard, daring to oppose the current public narrative. There is an ongoing reflection about Israel's right to exist 
which is voiced, however, mostly through the lens of the victim. Israel must still move from survival consciousness to developmental consciousness in order to reach the capacity for true self-reflection from the stool of director, seeing in all directions. As in a young individual, so also in a young nation, it is more difficult to sense the soul quality, since the personality has not been enough formed yet for the soul to start expressing some of its quality through it, some of, of its qualities through it. It may be imagined that soul expression will begin to become possible when Israel will embrace its minorities as equal citizens. According to some astrologers, Israel has an Aquarius ascendant. If this experiment will succeed, Israel may be a forerunner for the Aquarian age. It may be speculated for Israel's soul's potential to be along the fourth ray. If Israeli Jews and Palestinian Arabs will learn to complement each other, they may act as a bridging agent between East and West. Being a Jewish project, modern Israel may give the Jewish people the opportunity to learn its lessons and break the ancient spell of separatism and anti-Semitism along the lines of right human relations. Like to release the chosenness and become a nation among nations. The way there seems at the moment very long. The new Israeli ultra-national government leads definitely in the opposite direction now. As long as there is the occupation, no democracy is possible. As long as the borders are not defined together with the Palestinians based on right human relations, Israel will continue to live under threat to its survival. Much of its resources and creative energies are being drained by maintaining this unhealthy situation. And as long as there is no clear separation between state and religion, Israel will not have a constitution and will remain vulnerable to the appetites of the powerful influences. The best hope seems to lie in the hands of those who rally against the occupation. Under the previous government, the attitude towards the Arab minority had started to change. This trend must be safeguarded to continue in spite of the new government's move to the contrary. The change might come, uh, must come 
the change must come from the bottom up through continuing the demonstrations and courageous public speaking up in all walks of life and through people of goodwill, both Arabs and Jews, holding on to their human values, insisting on right relations in their personal and communal field of influence. And our blessing to Israel. Israel, be a mensch. Release chosenness. Become a nation among nations. Thank you, friends, for being with us. Yes, Israel, be a mensch. Release chosenness. Become a nation among nations. Let us hold Israel for a few more moments in silence, letting all these many impressions settle and allowing for a soul blessing for Israel to formulate itself in us. Thank you for your holding. And whoever would like to send a soul blessing for Israel, we will be very happy to receive. Um, please state your nation also after your name and leave some moments of silence between the blessings. Annette from Germany. Israel, may forgiveness and love begin open your heart, allowing the male and female principles to meet and come more and more into balance. Thank <laughs> you. 
Martha from the United States. May you, dear Israel, be blessed with a deep memory of the wisdom of your scholars who had profound insight. And may your youth move very quickly to attach itself to the best of the strong mentors who advocate peace, not militarism, who advocate compromise, negotiation, pragmatism over ideology. We support you. We love you in your growth. Rob Faulkner from Australia. Thank you, Helen and the Israeli group for such a probing and penetrating analysis of the deeply complex and conflicted situation of your young nation. As, we, as each of us is best tested in daily life in our most difficult situations. So humanity is being tested in Israel. Our hearts are with you. Desha from Canada. Dear Israel, may you find your way to use your youthful strength and creativity to work cooperatively internally and with your neighbors to move forward in right relationship into the new era. Carlos from Argentina. I bless you, Israel, that you have the loving understanding and spiritual will to remove the old and blocking thought forms through self sacrifice. This is Andrea from the United States. We hold you, dear Israel, just as a mother holds her child with unconditional love, seeing your deep beauty, recognizing your developing creativity and blessing you with perseverance and courage.
This is Kit from the United States. And my blessing for Israel is that Israel recognizes, celebrates, and lives the truth that everyone is in the image of God, thus releasing the sins of separation so that all inhabitants of Israel are equal and valued participants, and Israel becomes an Aquarian light to the nations. Uh, thank you, Helen, for such a profound, deeply moving snapshot that really brings one into the consciousness and the tangible field that is Israeli. I offer this as a kind of a seed thought. In brother sisterhood, I transmute conflict into harmony with God's plan on earth and become a lighted bridge between East and West. Thank you. This is Julian from Britain. Thank you for the wonderful snapshot. And may Israel discover calm, confidence, and let the soul take it to into a peaceful and cooperative future. Thank you. This is Deborah from the United States. And my invocation is, may the deepest soul of Israel from time out of mind, embedded in the relationship with God, our creator, Move consciously forward through time to flower into its Aquarian soul as the deepest, truest emissary and embodiment of humanity with conscious recognition of its place in the one life. Uh, this is uh, Judy from the United States. Israel, may soul light, which is seen in many of your people, begin to break through more widely so that right human relations can be your guiding star. And may your history, your soul journey, 
bless the world and the peoples of all nations. This is Sabina from Germany. Dear incredible Israel, may your soil enriched by almost any nation of the world, let grow and blossom the needed teaching of conscious and correct living together. We believe in you, we care for you, we stand behind you with blessing each single of your steps. This is Mark Avraha from Sarasota, Florida. I'm so grateful to be here with the beautiful description offered us of the situation as seen. And I'm literally trembling with the desire to see peace in the Holy Land for all of the people. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echod. Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Allahu, 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 Allahu. Blessed be Allah, God. Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison. Christ is here and risen. The Jewish, Christian, Muslim, Druze, brothers and sisters are all the strongest part of the tent of Abraham, brought to this earth to live together. We have forgotten our spirituality as the central core of our life and being. As we move into the ascension process now, which is happening, whether we desire it or not, or are ready, so we move into that our bodies are changing from crystalline, from, from uh, well, let's just say alkaline to crystalline base. Everything is changing. The earth is changing. May we soon, so soon and readily awaken, reawaken our spiritual nature and say, this is first. This is the reason for separation as we have forgotten who we are. And now we know that we are all brothers and sisters, children under the tent of Abraham as one human family. We are the victory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is Rosita from Britain. Dear Israel, may you one day inspire the whole world with a beautiful resolution to your seemingly intractable problems. Many blessings.
Daniela calling in from Belgium. May Israel, may you recognize, may you recognize the supernal light which you inhabit and which inhabits you. Hi, this is Lyrita from the United States. Uh, may the blooming of acceptance of truth, acceptance of diversity, and acceptance of true brotherhood with all people build right human relations. Silvana, please unmute yourself. Sorry. It's Silvana from Australia. Dear Israel, may your youthful vitality, individuality, and impetuosity be tempered with divine love, wisdom, compassion, and may you grow in maturity as a nation among all nations. Thank you. Thank you so much for all these many beautiful, powerful blessings. We would like to invite the Israelis among us to tell us what is it doing with you to receive both this snapshot and recite this snapshot and receive all these beautiful blessings. Hi, this is Efrat from Jerusalem. Uh, first of all, I would like, I don't have enough words to describe the healing that I go through your beautiful blessing is really needed now here. It really touched me deeply and thank you. When we were walking about preparing this snapshot, um, in the same time we experienced all the changes that happening here. And uh, it was so clear that if we would had present this snapshot, a year and a half ago, 
we will bring a whole different picture because the changes here are so extreme and, and such a speed. And then we realize that this is this is part of the of this uh, entity, the changes and the instability. And like Helen, like you said, it's it's in in process. It's being. We are not yet um, something that we can define. Uh, it was very intense experience. Uh, we were preparing this snapshot by uh, sharing meditation with Helen and me quite a lot and shared with our impression from the meditation and the picture we got was not easy uh, <laughs> as to speak. But uh, I personally get a lot of hope and courage and inspired by the new liberal uh, young people here that now every every day are more and more in the street. This uh, this characterize of not uh, we not, we not accept what you say. We have our own way. We are uh, a revelion in a way. Uh, is really bring me a lot of ho hope because uh, it's it's really um, going. What happened here last uh, Saturday that uh, it started with demonstration in Tel Aviv and it's going bigger and bigger. So it seems like some of you mentioned in your beautiful bless blessing that uh, there is a light. There is a lot of light here. In, in the heart and in the mind of many people that are trying to get out now. And maybe we will need it so much dark to come uh, to wake it, to awake it. So thank you so much. Hi, this is Helen from Jerusalem. I also felt like a frat. A lot, a lot of healing. I almost, I was in tears. Listening to the blessings that you friends um, conveyed to this entity. Um, I would like to share something, uh, um, you know, till now, uh, we have not, I mean, till a few months ago, <clears throat> um, the three of us, Efrat, uh, Uta, and I have uh, been working for many, many years on, uh, the, 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 on the Jewish people as a nation. And uh, Israel being um, being an enterprise of the Jewish people seemed like, uh, well, you know, we never know if it's something that's going to to last or not to last. At least for me, this is how I saw it. Um, the three of us who worked on 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 the Jewish people. Um, uh, I would like to say Efrat is an Israeli born, Uta is born in Germany, and I was born in Egypt. So Uta and I came at a later age, while Efrat uh, had her roots here, feeling very much the country as um, uh, something real something beautiful, something that is part of her. I much more rarely have felt 
Israel as part of uh, of me, my not being born here and uh, immigrating and going through all the processes of immigration and um, and being uh, uh, trying to uh, accommodate myself in the in this new uh, you know in the, in this new surrounding. And the fact that we have decided to um, consider Israel as a nation, as as a state, I wouldn't, I don't know yet um, how to call it a nation. It's a it's a state, definitely. It's already seventy years old, yeah, <clears throat> and it has its presence in this uh, in this world. It gave me. A kind of uh, inner quiet that I am, I personally am in the right place. I am not an immigrant, I'm not a stranger, I'm part of it. It seldom happened to me in the past, and it was very powerful. And I would like to share also something that happened those last two weeks. We were a group of uh, of friends, of workers who met here. And uh, this physical meeting uh, has done something to me in terms of Israel. I cannot define it yet in words, but uh, it has strengthened something both in the heart uh, relationship between the people themselves, but my heart relationship with this entity, with this state. Um, I am right now very moved, and I want really to bless you all and thank you for being there and for. Uh, that I can allow myself to share such a thing with you. Yeah, this is Uta from Germany, but I'm also from Israel. I lived in Israel almost 35 years. Um, it was also for me a very healing experience to receive all the blessings for this young, troubled country. Um, for me, it was not easy to live uh, in Israel, in Jerusalem. I was there as a service, not as a love of my life, so to speak. Um, I have passed through many phases with the Jewish people and Israel as a country. Um, visiting it now, just the last two weeks, we had our annual Hechal meeting Jerusalem Outpost meeting. Um, I would say for me, it is a process of normalization, really moving into seeing Israel, visualizing Israel, blessing Israel as a nation among nations. Um, yeah, and hearing all these blessings and also uh, by going through through this deep process of, uh, of doing a snapshot for Israel, um, this possibility of normalization, it can just be a normal nation. Um, it's a huge <clears throat> hope, it's a huge um, a relief, I would say, in myself. I can let go and uh, trust. Um, 
it's not that it's so clear that uh, Israel will survive. Yes, mind you, it, it needs to work out its problems. If it doesn't, uh, it may not come out so well, this experiment. But this, um, this work that we today did here gives me hope that yes. Okay, thank you. Is there somebody who would like to add something more before I say a few? I would like to speak to two more points before we close. Hey, hi, this is Fat again. Uh, yes, I would like to add uh, one point. That um, hearing your blessing and and the the love and acceptance and and compassion that that comes through with this um, really gave me uh, this sense of. Uh, being kind of representative of this nation of this entity that uh, yes it is it is possible it is possible to give up the magiali and the and the victimhood and yes it is really uh, it's a real possibility to be a nation among nations and this came through your blessing so i thank you <clears throat> Thank you, Efrat. Beautiful. Yeah, wow. Okay. Next month, we will convene for Australia. Hello, Australians. On the 7th of February. Um, we would like again to invite you, um, all of you, to start a snapshot for your nation, even if you don't have a group, if it's only one person. Uh, we are continually evolving the snapshot protocol, and Alexander can make it available again. Uh, in its present form, it will continue to evolve and we uh, very much welcome your input also. <clears throat> yeah, and it takes time. We can tell you that with the Israeli snapshot, it, we, we worked until this afternoon on, on the snapshot. Um, yeah, it's good to have time to do this work. And I would uh, like also to uh, turn our awareness again to the work that is being done with the Great Triangle of Nations, Russia, the US and Britain. This focus is held ongoing already several months now by several groups. The work is subjective and it's focused every Sunday and each in our own time. And I would like to add uh, another focus that is uh, seems related is uh, an upcoming conference focusing on the unification of Europe. Uh, it is organized by the Aquarian Wisdom Retreat Center in Portugal. It will be happening in the beginning of April. I would like Alexander to uh, 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 to ask you to please share the link uh, where you can get more information about this conference in, in the chat. And uh, already ask uh, if you are from Europe or related somehow to Europe, uh, perhaps you may consider contributing to this conference and you will find under the link you will find the address and everything else 
about it. Um, so I would like us to take just one more minute uh, to use this opportunity of our togetherness to give a boost to this great triangle and to Europe. Just one minute, very briefly. Let us start back into our council chamber atmosphere. Holding this space together, telepathic space and visualizing in it the three great nations, USA, Russia, Britain. And seeing them coming into right relations. See the energy flow freely within this triangle. Transmuting, harmonizing, and see Europe in the middle of it. Also, harmonizing into right relation with all these three great nations. finding its balance, its right place within this triangle. Seeing the energy flowing freely between all of the nations involved in divine law and order. Coming into this higher order and letting it ripple out as a blessing to all nations. Thank you, friends. Until next month. Bye bye. Bye. Any Elias, I have a question for the next meeting on the um, on the link for the meetings. It said. The following meetings will all begin at 2.30 until um, 3.30. Is that correct? Um, no, it will begin at the regular time, uh, which is 7 p.m. GMT, which is 2 p.m. Eastern. Oh. So OK. Some, yeah. um, you might Either want to resend or, or update the um, when you go to register um to update that to show the two two o'clock uh beginning um alexander so i that would be helpful because i was confused they all had 2 30 as a start with 3 30 ending except for today and again all, as always alexander dear sasha thank you so much for your support of so much service this is kit <laughs>